Hello, I'd like to introduce you to a new learning tool called CyberSit. This brief video will show you how to use this online interactive tool that teaches you the catalytic mechanism of cytochrome P450 monooxygenase. To begin, let's go over the home page. On the left is a yellow action field. This is where the animated objects will appear. On the right is, is the gray bar, which has the links for the different parts of this learning application. This includes a link for the tutorial mode and the interactive mode of learning. I will be demonstrating both of these for you. So let's first go to the tutorial mode, and I would recommend that you start with the tutorial mode. You'll notice as soon as we launch the tutorial mode in the gray box on the right, you see a menu to select a substrate. Clicking on that, we have a drop-down menu for various substrates that are catalyzed by cytochrome P450. The first one in the list is the hydroxylation of ibuprofen. This says complete reaction because it goes through all the steps leading to the hydroxylation of this drug. The following reactions do not include the first six steps uh, that the complete reaction has because the first six steps are common to all the different reactions catalyzed by cytochrome P450 monooxygenase. It's just the last two steps which are indicated in each of these other steps that differ. So let's take a look at this complete reaction with ibuprofen and we'll just look at one of the steps. As soon as I select that module, we see these navigation tools. The double arrows here that are pointing backwards are to go back a step in the learning program. The double arrows going forward are to advance a step in the learning program. And the middle single arrow is the play button. To demonstrate this module, I'm going to advance to step six. So I'll we'll click this a few times. I've stopped the uh, animation for just a minute to tell you a few things about what we see here. Now, in the left-hand yellow box, the animation field, we see a number of animated objects, including these 3D representations of the of the two enzymes that are involved in the reaction, the cytochrome P450 monooxygenase and the cytochrome P450 reductase. And then below them, we have a 2D representation of each of the two enzymes. So, so monooxygenase here and the reductase here. These are larger versions of these objects and they, they focus in on areas where the enzyme reaction occur. So in the active site here, we see the heme group and the substrate, the ibuprofen molecule bound. And over here on the reductase, we see the reducing cofactor NADP. So now I'm going to press the play button and we can listen to the audio animation. But at the same time, uh, over here on the right, we can see a text version of the narration provided in bullet form. The peroxo intermediate is unstable and is rapidly protonated to form the hydroperoxo intermediate. The proton apparently is contributed by a bound water molecule found within a hydrated channel of the enzyme. Like the peroxo intermediate, the formation of the hydroperoxo intermediate can sometimes become uncoupled from oxidation of the substrate, and these intermediates can be released from the enzyme as the reactive oxygen intermediates superoxide anion or hydrogen peroxide, respectively. Since the hydroperoxo intermediate is unstable, it rapidly combines with another proton to yield the dihydroperoxo intermediate. This decomposes to release a water molecule leaving group, resulting in the oxyferrol intermediate, also called compound I, that remains bound to the heme iron. This reactive and electrophilic group will next react with the substrate in the following steps. Now you can see that 
at the completion of this step, the play arrow has now returned and we can click that and advance to step seven if we wish. But what I'd like to show you though is that you can get more information on any of these objects by just double left clicking on the object. So let's do that with cytochrome P450 monooxygenase here. If I double click on it, I'll get this text box which tells me more about cytochrome P450 monooxygenase, just a brief description about the enzyme. But then to get more information still, we can click on this link to PubMed review article on cytochrome P450 monooxygenase as shown in this article by Gingrich et al. Next, I'd like to show you the other mode, which is the interactive mode, to leave the tutorial mode. And you can see that uh, we were in the tutorial mode as shown in this bar along the top. It says that we're in tutorial mode and this was step six of the complete reaction. Down here on the lower left, we see the interactive buttons to return to the home page and to go to the interactive mode. So we will go to the interactive mode by clicking that. Again, we see pretty much the same appearance here, the menu bar, and we can select from that menu bar a number of reactions. Again, the complete reaction with all eight steps, again, using ibuprofen, we have the nine reaction types showing the last two steps that differ between reactions. I again will use the complete reaction module with the hydroxylation of ibuprofen. And the purpose of this interactive mode is to assess your learning. So after you've gone over the information in the tutorial and learned by listening to the audio animation and reading the text, you can then test your knowledge in this interactive mode. So we'll click on that. We can see the links here to start the interactive mode and to clear the attempt to go to another reaction type. So I will click on the start. We see a number of objects appearing, the cytochrome P450, the two and the two the three-dimensional and the two-dimensional versions. We have a substrate, this would be the ibuprofen, but we have oxygen, we have proton that we need um, during the initial oxygen activation process. And um, now we're asked to drag and drop objects as they should interact with these enzymes during the catalytic cycle. So to begin, the, well, the first step in this uh, process would be to bind the substrate to the enzyme which we'll do here. And we can see that as the ibuprofen binds to the active site of cytochrome P450 monooxygenase, we get that positive reinforcing sound. Now, the second step would be to reduce the ferric iron to the ferrous or Fe2 form. But let's just say that you didn't really understand that and you figured that well, the, this is an oxygenase, so maybe the next step would be to introduce the other substrate of the reaction, which would be the oxygen. So let's try to bind the oxygen to the ferric form of the enzyme. And we see that didn't work, indicated by that ugly error sound. And the oxygen returned to its starting place, allowing us to try something else. So, well, let's say, oh, now I remember, it's the reductase that has to re reduce the iron. Ah, there, we got the right sound from that one. And we see the conversion of the Fe3 to the Fe2. And, you know, you proceed along um, in introducing, now the oxygen should be able to bind. Okay, there it goes. Now, then there's several other steps that would uh, occur after this that I won't go through, but I encourage you to try this software out yourself, not only for the overall complete reaction utilizing the ibuprofen substrate, but learn about the other reactions that are present in this. So let me just show you what those 
and those last two steps for one of the other reactions. And let's take the dehydrogenation reaction, which is really quite a bit different than for the hydroxylation. So again, we now we've selected that from the menu, and now we have to start. Okay, so this is all the way up to step six, if you went through the complete reaction. And here we have activated oxygen on the feral form of the enzyme. And here we have a substrate, which can be dehydrogenated by cytochrome P450 reductase. On the substrate, all the substrates would have the reactive part of the substrate indicated in red highlighting as shown here, so with this methyl group off the uh, aromatic ring. Uh, this is not ibuprofen, but another substrate. And I should point out that for all the substrates that were used in the tutorial mode, there are different substrates available in the interactive modes. So we're in the seventh step of the reaction where the substrate is activated by generating a free radical in this methyl group. So uh, to generate that radical, we have to lose a hydrogen atom. So we'll click on that. And there it goes. And we got the uh, sound that we could go along with that hydrogen atom abstraction. You can see here by the dot on that carbon that that's a carbon radical, which is reactive, will interact with this activated oxygen. So if we click on that here, <laughs> the two hydrogens were removed from the substrate and went with the oxygen to generate that water molecule that floated off. And what is left is the dehydrogenated uh, double bond created between the carbon and the aromatic ring. So that concludes this brief introduction to this learning tool. I encourage you to try the tutorial and the interactive modes, and I hope this helps you learn this important enzyme in drug metabolism.